Hello, my name is Matthew Appleby and this is my presentation about the round trip time simulation. Today I'm going to be explaining a new traffic analysis methodology, why it's useful and how it works. Currently there are two paradigms in the world of lift traffic analysis, round trip time calculations and dispatcher based simulations. Calculations are transparent, repeatable and at the end find us a nice neat round trip time value. Simulations are complex, use random numbers and each simulator will give you a slightly different result. So why would we ever want to use a simulation? Well let's start by taking a look at the simplest methodology, the up peak calculation. This makes some massive assumptions about traffic flow. It assumes that all the passengers are going up and that no one's coming down the building. General analysis allows the complexity of this model to be extended. It asks for similar inputs and produces similar outputs to the up peak, but it also allows for passengers heading down the building. Simulation allows the complexity of this model to be extended even further. It can handle destination control or lifts with different sizes and speeds in the same group. Indeed, the possibilities of simulation are almost limitless. So, if simulations are so great, why use calculations? As I've said, calculations are transparent and repeatable. They determine round trip, from which we can calculate handling capacity and interval. In many cases, this is all we need to ensure that we have enough lifts and that people will not have to wait too long. Simulations are complex, time-consuming and lack transparency. Furthermore, there's a debate around the round-trip time result produced by simulators due to the differing opinions on what counts as a round trip. So, we've discussed the problems and benefits with all the methodologies. Now it's time to build a new one. So what we want is a process that can model any complex system, takes all the standard inputs and finds the standard outputs, including an undisputed round-trip time and is a fully transparent process that I can explain and everyone will be able to understand the logic of it. And thus, I am brought to the title of this paper, The Round Trip Time Simulation. I make it sound like it's brand new invention. It's actually not. Our good friend Professor Lutfi Al-Sharif has been speaking about this since the very first symposium when I was 10. That's right, it's using the Monte Carlo simulation. So, little Monte Carlo recap first. What makes this different from a dispatcher-based simulation? Well, normally passengers are generated with a time marker, which tells the simulation at what point they appear. It models the full system as realistically as possible and runs for a long predetermined length of time. The Monte Carlo simulation generates all the passengers at the beginning of the simulation and then just runs that one round trip. At the end of the simulation, the model stops and restarts generating a new set of passengers. Let's go through those steps in a little bit more detail. We will begin with the probability density function of an origin destination matrix. This is an array of probabilities with the columns representing origins and the rows representing destinations. Each number is the probability that a passenger is going from the specified origin to the specified destination. Now, the next step is to make a cumulative distribution function of the origin destination matrix by successively adding to each box the value from the previous box. Let's see that in action. We now have a cumulative distribution function of our origin destination matrix and as you can see, we finish with the number 1, because all of the probabilities add up to 1. We are now going to pick a random number using a spinner. Now, I'm looking for the first element that is greater than or equal to our random value. This gives us an origin of 1 and a destination of 2. Time to make a few more numbers using our random number generator. Then we can use these numbers to generate our passengers. We now have eight random representative passengers. Next, we need to work out what our lift is going to do. We begin with a passenger list and a new list for up passengers and down passengers. For each passenger, the origin is compared to the destination to identify if the passenger is going up or down. 
The two stop lists are now sorted into order, up into ascending order and down into descending order. All of the repeating values can then be removed. And lastly, the two lists can be concatenated into one stop list. This can be fed into the simulation. So long as the lift visits these floors in this order, all of the passengers will be taken to where they need to go. That's the theory anyway. Why don't we have a look at that play out? We're now going to have a look at a round trip demonstration. This goes pretty fast, so try to keep track on what's going on. Once all of the stops have been visited, all of the passengers have been taken to the floor they need to go to. For that last demonstration, we had eight passengers. So, how did I know that our system would have eight passengers? Uh, I didn't. I made it up. For demonstration purposes, I picked a random number. Unfortunately, that's not how reality works. We don't know the number of people waiting to get on the lift. We do know the number of people arriving at the lift per second. We call that the arrival rate. This is a standard input that designers have access to. This equation shows us how to find passenger count. So all we need to find out is the interval. What's an interval? The interval is the time between round trips beginning. This means that interval time will equal round trip time divided by the number of lifts. So if we simplify things a bit, when there is only one lift, interval equals round trip time. If the passengers are arriving at a constant rate, the round trip time is proportional to the passenger count. If the lift took longer, more people would be waiting to get in the lift when it returns to the main terminal, so the passenger count is higher. So to find a passenger count, we need a round trip time. Uh, how do we find a round trip time? We use a Monte Carlo, like we were just talking about. But wait, the Monte Carlo needs passenger count as an input. Hmm, you know what this reminds me of? The chicken and the egg, okay, Bear with me here. The egg comes from a chicken that eats food, but the chicken comes from the process of hatching an egg. So where do we start? Well, to start a chicken farm, the farmer must first buy a chicken. It may not be the chicken that they want, but it's a chicken. Our farmer is then going to feed the chicken until it lays eggs. Those eggs hatch and the cycle continues. If a chicken is too big, it's gonna to be too expensive to maintain. And if a chicken is too small, it won't be able to lay enough eggs. But eventually, after many generations, we have the perfect chicken. Now, back to lifts, and the metaphor extends perfectly, almost. We start with a round trip time guess, which we use to find the passenger count. A Monte Carlo is then run to find the new round trip time guess, and the cycle continues. Eventually, we find our Goldilocks round trip, which is our final output. This whole process can now be boxed up as a round trip time simulation and fits neatly in our traditional lift traffic analysis methodology. We have a simulation that looks and feels just like a good old calculation that we know and love. And the capabilities of this are just beginning. In a conventional control system, there are a pair of buttons on the outside of the lift and a number panel inside the lift. This means that when the dispatcher is allocating lifts to passengers, all it knows is if the passenger is going up or down. If we let them choose their own lift car, the assignment is almost random and then after the assignment, destinations are collected. However, in a destination control system, the number panel is outside the lift, so the passenger can enter their destination in advance of entering the lift. The destinations are collected first and then passengers are assigned lifts. By giving the dispatcher destination information earlier, we allow it to make an informed decision and thus it produces a more efficient system. 
Instead of being randomly sorted with people going to different floors, sorting is logical. Some lifts can go shooting up to the top floor with the passengers who have a long way to go. Meanwhile, the other lifts can handle the lower floors with the passengers who are only going up one or two levels. This grouping process reduces average round trip time, increases handling capacity and makes everyone happy. Everyone except calculations. So as I said before, calculations simplify the model and multiple lifts is no exception to that. The way a calculation works is to reduce the number of lifts to one and then reduce the passenger count by reducing the demand proportionally. It can then run the calculation with one lift and at the end of the calculation it multiplies the results by the number of lifts to get the correct capacity values. And this works so long as your passengers are assigned randomly. Calculation doesn't really work when you want to test destination control. Dispatches contain a very complicated set of decision processes and every company that produces a dispatcher has a slightly different algorithm. They're often kept secret and some of them involve machine learning and fuzzy logic and genetic algorithms. But one of the requirements I set for the round trip simulation was that it would be fully transparent. So we're gonna have to look for some simple dispatching logic. Introducing the allocator. It's like a dispatcher, but way easier. The idea of an allocator is to allocate these lifts, which are all starting at identical positions, to these passengers who have already entered their origin and destination based on some kind of logic. The first step is to separate the up passengers and the down passengers into two lists. Our up list is sorted by destination and our down list is sorted by origin. The down list is then reversed and the two lists are concatenated. So, eight passengers, four lifts, that's two passengers a lift. And thus we have a logical, transparent allocation routine with no dispatcher related complications. So, <laughs> I've done a lot of talking. You probably want some proof that the round trip time simulation works. Let's have a look at the numbers. So this shows a comparison of all the methodologies. We can see that the round trip simulation fits right in, producing similar results to the other methodologies within a suitable margin of error. These charts make the similarities even clearer. The Monte Carlo simulation has been used to solve problems since before I was born. It's been discussed as a method of lift traffic analysis since the first lift and escalator symposium in 2011 and it has now been implemented into code in a manner that fits into the methodologies currently used in lift traffic analysis. So does this replace calculation? Absolutely not. Analysis reports that have repeatable, non-randomised evaluations are still vital. Does this replace simulation? Absolutely not. This is still a simplification. Full simulations should still be run on every system and are still essential for testing dispatches. But by using the same inputs and resulting in the same outputs as a calculation. The round trip time simulation bridges the gap between calculation and simulation, bringing maths that could only be done by researchers into the hands of engineers. Having been part of the team bringing the round trip time simulation to our own company's product, I hope to see this technology being used to advance the capabilities of calculations, simulations, and even dispatches used on real lifts. I'm excited. And if just a little bit of that excitement has transferred to you today, then my job here is done. Thank you very much for having me.